Okay, the endocrine system. So this is a, a big section with quite a bit of stuff in it. Um, so, you know, we always start off with, um, we have all these questions that we're trying to get answered in the video, and then I'll keep referring back to the questions as we're getting through through the video, and then the same screen will show up at the end where you can try to answer all the questions and hopefully make sure we're getting this stuff locked in our mind. Um, but the, you know, the focus of these questions kind of ranges from uh, certainly the hypothalamus and pituitary to hormone regulation to positive and negative feedback loops um, uh, to ADH and uh, hormones released by the anterior pituitary um, a few other glands that we'll go over briefly like the thyroid gland and the parathyroid gland some stuff about blood glucose that's important um, and then finally sex hormones so it's an action-packed video all right so we'll start off with hormone regulation the endocrine system consists of multiple organs that secrete hormones directly into the bloodstream to control body processes and maintain homeostasis hormones then travel through the bloodstream <clears throat> and bind to receptors triggering a response by the target tissue the two main uh, classes of hormones uh, that we want to be familiar with are steroid and peptide hormones. So we'll go over these here. Uh, steroid horm hormones are water soluble and bind to receptors on the surface of target cells. They induce a signaling cascade that leads to a rapid response. Uh, peptide hormones are fat soluble and can pass freely through the plasma membrane and bind to receptors inside the cell. They induce changes in cellular gene expression. Their effects are longer lasting uh, compared to the steroid hormones. And the body maintains homeostasis uh, through both positive and negative feedback loops. So uh, positive feedback loops really are pretty rare and lead to physiological changes. Like an example of a positive feed feedback loop, loop, loop is uh, giving birth. Uh, negative feedback loops, though, are more common, and they involve some type of deviation from normal, a response, and the response negates the need for any further action. Glucagon being released in response to low blood glucose, which in turn appropriate, appropriately regulates the desired blood glucose level, would be an example of a negative feedback loop. I think we had a question there actually. So, with the feedback loops, um, if you look at the third bullet point, what is a negative feedback loop? Give an example. So, we just, just went through that there with uh, glucagon being released in response to low blood glucose. Okay, hypothalamus. Um, the hypothalamus is the main regulatory gland of the endocrine system, which is located in the brain under the thalamus. The hypothalamus is a bridge between the endocrine and nervous systems. As part of the nervous system, it sends electrical signals to the adrenal gland to release adrenaline. The hypothalamus contains centers for the regulation of hunger and thirst. The hypothalamus controls hormone re production via the anterior pituitary and produces hormones that are then stored and released by the posterior pituitary. The hypothalamus produces two hormones that are stored and released in the posterior pituitary, and those are oxytocin and vasopressin. Uh, oxytocin stimulates uterine contractions during labor. Okay, so the hypothalamus really has a lot of stuff it's got to do. Um, and if you just for our that first question there on that first bullet point, what is the function of the hypo, hypothalamus? Right, and we want to think that it's you know the number one thing is that it's the regulatory gland and that it's a bridge between the endocrine and nervous systems. 
Uh, as we look at the posterior pituitary, it releases oxytocin and vasopressin. The release of oxytocin stimulates the contraction of the uterus and the mammary glands during labor. Uh, ADH is made by special nerve cells found in an area at the base of the brain, which would be the hypothalamus. The nerve cells transport the hormone down the nerve fibers, which are axons, to the pituitary gland where the hormone is released into the bloodstream. ADH helps to control blood pressure by acting on the kidneys and the blood vessels. Its most important role is to conserve the fluid volume of your body by reducing the amount of water passed out in the urine. Okay, and then as we look at the anterior pituitary, it releases direct hormones, which stimulate a response directly at the target hormone, and tropic hormones, which are hormones that have other endocrine glands as their target. The hypothalamus secretes tropic hormones that target the anterior pituitary, and the thyroid gland secretes thyroxin, which targets the hypothalamus and therefore can be also considered a tropic hormone. Okay, now we have hormones released by the anterior pituitary. So it looks like we got seven of these, and these you definitely have to be familiar with. We have put them somewhat in order of, of importance in terms of likelihood to be tested on it, but really you gotta be familiar with all of these. So we start off with uh, the follicle stimulating hormone, FSH, which stimulates gonads to produce gametes. FSH induces the maturation of an ovarian follicle in females and stimulates spermatogenesis in males. Uh, luteinizing hormone, LH, stimulates the ovaries and testes. The hormone LH induces ovulation in females and stimulates testosterone production in males. FSH induces the maturation of an ovarian follicle in females and stimulates spermatogenesis in males, which is what we just said. ACTH stimulates the adrenal cortex to release hormones. TSH, which is thyroid stimulating hormone, stimulates thyroid to release thyroxin. Thyroxin controls the rate of metabolism. The thyroid Thyroid hormones, which are T3 and T4, regulate the metabolic rate. The thyroid releases calcitonin in response to high blood calcium levels and induces the storage of calcium in the bone. Growth hormone, not surprisingly, stimulates bone growth, and that's GH is growth hormone. And then finally, prolactin induces milk production at the mammary glands in females. Okay, so we really got to be familiar with all of those. Um, some other glands that we, that we just want to touch on here really quickly. The pineal gland secretes melatonin to regulate sleep cycles. Of the endocrine organs, the function of the pineal gland was the last discovered. Located deep in the center of the brain, the pineal gland was once known as the third eye. The pineal gland produces melatonin which helps maintain circadian rhythm and regulate reproductive hormones. Um, as we look here, so now we have the thyroid and parathyroid. Uh, they are located in the neck and control metabolism and calcium balance. Uh, the thyroid uh, gland releases thyroxin and calcitonin. Thyroxin controls the rate of metabolism while calcitonin lows, lowers calcium levels. The parathyroid gland releases parathormone, which raises blood calcium levels. The parathyroid gland works in opposition of calcitonin. And then we can look here real quickly at hypo and hyperthyroidism. So symptoms of hypothyroidism are weight gain, fatigue, and cold intolerance while symptoms of hyperthyroidism are weight loss, hyperactivity, and heat intolerance. Okay, so as we go back to the questions, it looks like I, as I was going through the hormones, um, 
I skipped over LH. There's a question about that, which is this fifth one down. So what does luteinizing hormone stimulate? And that answer is the ovaries and the testes. So we went over that uh, here just a minute ago. And let's see, I think we've got a thyroid gland question, don't we? Um, the last one down here, the seventh bullet point, which gland releases calcitonin and thyroxin? Okay, so that would be the thyroid gland. And then even that one right above it, uh, point number six, uh, compare and contrast calcitonin and parathormone. Okay, sure. So uh, calcitonin, uh, as I was just telling you, uh, lowers calcium levels while parathormone uh, raises them. So that's really the difference there. Okay, we got through all that. Blood glucose. Okay, <clears throat> so real quickly here. Um, the pancreas is responsible for regulating blood glucose levels. Okay, and that's going to relate to one of your questions for sure, right? Is just what is the role of the pancreas? Regulates blood glucose levels. The pancreas functions as both an endocrine gland by releasing hormones and also as an exocrine gland by releasing digestive enzymes. Glucagon as well as insulin is released by the pancreas. And we've seen insulin and glucagon show up in other videos. So the fact that it's shown up in more than one video, more than one section of our app, uh, should certainly suggest to you to be ready for it, right? That it might show up at least once, if not more, on the actual exam. Insulin is released in response to high blood glucose and leads to a decrease in blood glucose. Like, while glucagon is released in response to low blood glucose, it leads to an increase in blood glucose. And then we have diabetes, which is associated with abnormally high blood glucose levels and is caused by insufficient insulin secretion. Okay, so we'd like to know all of those. All right, quickly, the adrenal glands. Uh, the adrenal glands are located just above the kidneys. They are composed of an outer cortex and an inner adrenal medulla. The adrenal medulla secretes epinephrine, which includes the fight or flight response, as it is known. And then epinephrine, uh, or just adrenaline, is known as the fight or flight hormone. Okay, and then finally, we get to the sex hormones. Uh, the ovaries secrete estrogen and progesterone, while the testes secrete testosterone. Estrogen promotes the development of primary and secondary female sexual characteristics. Uh, and also estrogen is uh, produced by the ovaries. Progesterone promotes the growth of the uterine lining. And finally, testosterone induces male sexual differentiation in utero and development of secondary male sexual characteristics in puberty. Okay, so as I said, there's, there's quite a bit in this section. Um, here's a bunch of questions. We went through uh, being able to answer each of these uh, through the content of the video. Uh, if you feel good about these, uh, you're in good shape. I would especially, I would really focus on all the stuff, unfortunately, but probably especially focusing on being familiar with uh, the hormones released by the uh, anterior pituitary.